This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. With drag and drop templates, spend less time on your website and more time on your art. When you think of Tony Stark, what do you think? Iron Man, billionaire, playboy. When I think of Tony Stark, I think engineer, do-it-yourselfer Leonardo da Vinci. The man behind the suit who makes his own tools, who thrives on blending function and form, and of course, who has his own AI. Computer, start my day. Good morning, Josh. It's Saturday, September 26th. Right now in Los Angeles, it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly clear skies. What you're looking at is an Amazon Alexa semi-autonomous YouTube studio controlled with voice commands, linked with smart plugs, motors, DIY lights, and a homemade camera dolly. This was mapped out with an iPhone and no programming skills used or required. Using standardized plug and play devices that communicate with each other in real time can perform multi-layered smart tasks, control items you wouldn't think can be controlled, all while connected to real world data, schedules, and preferences. This is the quintessential do-it-yourself YouTube studio and all this without a single line of code written. I make no apologies for how excessive and unnecessary this build is. This was a hell of a lot of fun to create. Let's unpack. If I'm honest with myself, I actually don't know how I feel about real artificial intelligence. This world seems to be advancing towards it at light speed with camps on either side. And perhaps this gives a clue why I spent so much time fantasizing about AI, being the storyteller that I am and exploring the melodrama that would ensue. Activating ping. No, I'm not ping. doing pink. Teal. Pinky. Teal. Pink ping. Teal. Purple. Teal. Ping. Magenta, Teal. which is the same as ping. Teal or I'm revoking your membership to DEF CON next year. Ping, or I'm forwarding your internet browsing data to your wife. Okay, fine. Pink it is. So this is technically part two of the studio build. If you'd like to see how we got this far, maybe give this a once over. What I didn't tell you in that last video was initially I didn't have the guts to do it alone. I mean, let's be real, any studio space is a luxury. 800 square feet is a lot easier to afford. This came in clutch shot. Good job with that. Yeah. When divided by two. It's July 2020 and amid multiple global crises, Los Angeles, like the rest of the US, is starting to buckle under the weight. All right, that's it. Good luck. All right, man. Bye, Otis. Goodbye, Sasha. How'd you know she was a Nazi? Hmm? How'd you know she was a Nazi? She talks in her sleep. <laughs> 800 square feet divided by one. Let's get to work. How to build a YouTube studio. Step one, fall on a bag of money. Now, Tony Stark inherited all his money, but I did not. Luckily, I built a website on Squarespace and within 30 minutes was up and running selling many of my creative digital assets, such as these ridiculously cool Blade Runner color grades or these very practical sound design presets. Using award-winning templates, and Squarespace made it easy for me to achieve financial freedom with a built-in commerce structure that literally deposits money into my bank account. Go to squarespace.com slash makeartnow and get 10% off your first year. Do it. The focal point of the studio is my custom editing bay. Housed inside is the brain of the operation, a $35 Alexa Echo Dot. With the help of my good friend and talented carpenter, we started the build from a solid wood top. See, this is our relationship. Harry does all the hard work, and I just take the credit for it. For the frame, I of course went with Brooklyn pipes. Once those were fitted together and bolted on, we added a 25 foot power cable and fed it through one of the legs. Now Kerry routed the slots for the Echo Dot to fit in as well as some pathways for better cable management, recessed lighting, and a Wi-Fi enabled power strip to communicate with any accessories that we plug in. I then primered it and added Modern Masters Metallic Reactive Paint. This paint is mixed with iron, and when oxidized, it creates a real layer of rust on any surface. <laughs> 
Once I sealed that in, I added some matte black paint to give new life to a beat up set of drawers. I dropped in the goodies, the Echo Dot, and a wireless phone charger. Now to keep my studio flexible, I add wheels to everything, and this is no exception. For finishing touches, I added a flange and pipe fitting as a headphone hanger. But the big kicker is a Broadlink RF to IR Wi-Fi converter. This device detects and replicates most standard RF or IR remote control signals, just like a universal remote does, but it also links with Alexa, so you can have voice control over any item that operates with a remote. Now, it didn't work with all my devices, but it did work with my Sony cameras. So essentially, voice control to record, stop, and toggle autofocus. So far, this isn't really AI. It's more of on or off switches that are linked to the Alexa. Some of them look like this and others look like this. They all more or less work the same. You download the app that they use, connect each device using its Bluetooth or Wi-Fi chip to your Wi-Fi connection, and then give Alexa permission to control that app via its skills in the skills section of the Alexa app. There are some really cool things that you can do with these plugs, particularly when you cluster them into routines. The routine that I use the most is temporarily turning off noisy appliances. So when I'm about to roll audio, I tell Alexa to quiet on set. She turns all the appliances off, switches off the AC, and then waits 10 minutes before turning everything back on. Very helpful, very impressive. Maybe a little too impressive if you know what I mean. Otis, stop, don't, Do don't. Know? It's you don't have to question. answer that. How many nanometers apart is your server? Hmm, I don't know that one. Because you're not real AI. Otis, the irony <laughs> of that statement. Okay, look, you want something to do? We got half the space to fill. So why don't you be purchasing manager and, and, and get to it and leave her alone. Now, while most YouTubers focus on one or two angles to make up their studio, I wanted to live in 360. I wanted to find inspiration any direction I looked and I wanted it to hint at my character. In the film world, this is called art direction. Now, art direction is really cool because it bleeds into so many other assets that you might collect, such as lighting, and in this case, practicals. What the hell is this? What does it look like? I don't fight. Your cholesterol is a little high. You couldn't have got me a jump rope? Check the bottom of the box. Very clever. Are you? Otis, you can stop ordering things. Thank you. Oh my God, it smells horrible. The thing about being resourceful is finding new meaning for discarded items. Door to the time machine? Not just a shelf, but a splash of art direction as well. Milwaukee tools, trusted by professionals and non-professionals. For bigger watt appliances, you want the smart Wi-Fi power strips that can handle that kind of load. 
Now, when I first moved in here, I had my eye on the 45 foot, seven inch support beam that spanned across the studio. Read about that. For most people, this might go unnoticed, but for me, I saw opportunity. Okay, I'm gonna need a bunch more. Go ahead. No. Give me a pipe. Give me a pipe. Give me a pipe. Two ton push trolley, 125 bucks. Half inch pipe fitting, seven dollars. And a five minute spot weld, 30 bucks. The most time consuming part of my job sometimes is just moving the lights. If you have the room to mount large diffused lights, that'll always look the best, but then it's fixed to one spot. Now that we got our access point, we can tap into the threads. On the left, we have the Aperture 120D Mark II with a Fresnel giving us a nice hard edge. And on the right, we have the Aperture 300D Mark I. I use the giant softbox and face it down. All right, so we got the handle figured out, but how do we power it? 50 foot industrial retractable power cord reel. I think by now you're all aware of my affinity for hose clamps. TV legs, I never use. Let's give them a new life. Oh my God, I'm only halfway. Considering I'm not beating up anyone anytime soon, let's talk security. So I've never actually bought a security camera before and this is the first time and I'm really impressed. Eufy three camera plus alarm, no hidden fees, no monthly contract. You own the devices and they connect to your phone every time from anywhere. I like that you can go geosync with your location so it disarms it as soon as you enter the building and it arms it again when you leave. It's not 4K, but for the price, it really can't be beat. All right, gang, that's it for the episode. We finished the rest of the build out on the next one with the DIY camera dolly using Alexa connectivity. We get some really cool shots like this one. This is Josh Joe saying thank you very much. Stay creative. Go make some art.